What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Kofi Kingston, a.k.a. one-third of the New Day. You're not going to say it with me, sir? Oh, oh yeah, God. come on. You better participate. Yeah, Let's try it again. <laughs> one-third of the New Day, and you are watching The Young and the Wrestlers. Ha, 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 ha. Welcome to the Young and the Wrestlers, the Pop Culture's WWE podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Betts, and flying solo tonight as Jem is off at another gig. This is our SmackDown analysis. This comes out to you every Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. on your podcast services, 9 a.m. on those YouTubes. But if you want to join that wrestling conversation, head over to our Facebook group, uh, our Twitter, our Instagram, Discord. All those links are in the description below. But if you want to join the wrestling conversation as it happens live, you come here. You come to twitch.tv slash thepopculturist on a Monday morning, a Monday evening for to hear us talk about the smack down. Uh, that used to be uh, a reward on our Patreon tier, but that has since changed. Uh, so now it is a open to everybody. Uh, so yeah, it's all well and good. But however, if you did want to support us financially, head over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash thepopculturist. Support us at any tier that you so choose. You don't have to, but it's always nice. Uh, and we are, and if you want to support us in more one-stop fashion, head over to popculturist.com slash shop, where you can buy shirts and other assorted shit with our logos on it. Uh, and we are on Twitch as well. As we mentioned, we do stream this show. However, we do also stream games on a Thursday night, uh, which our good friend Dave Chataway in the chat I uh, did notice. He's like, hey, you guys playing games? Nope. Talking wrestling. He's like, well, fuck that noise. I out. And he left. So, you know, it's good. But yes, this is, I'm flying solo. Uh, Jem is off uh, at a gig tonight because she does gig reviews on the side. Go check her Twitter at Jem the Pisser. Pardon me. If you do want to uh, catch up on whichever gig she goes and saw tonight. She did say who it was, but I can't remember. Not a band that I was aware of because I'm old and I listen to, I've listened to the same music since I was like 15. Um, it, you know, it hasn't really changed a lot. So in my heart, new metal never died is, is all I'm getting at. Uh, but yeah, so SmackDown analysis, we'll, we'll, we'll run through the storylines and the feuds and everything that is happening uh, within uh, within the, the, the SmackDown space. Ooh, I got, uh, is, is someone got clipped? Yeah, I got clipped. Oh, that's missing. So, because there will be a lot more chats with the chat as we do this tonight, uh, because it was by myself, I will need uh, the assistance to keep me to keep me going, to keep me chatting. Uh, Ghost Machine says this chat, this clip will haunt me forever. I hope it's about me saying dicks, because I want. I think I may have said that I want double dicks, double digit dicks, and I feel that that's gonna stay with me for a while. The Gamertron two thousand. How are you, my friend? Thank you so much for stopping by as we chat smack down now for those that may not know because i said it's it isn't it's a new year maybe new viewers uh within this show as it is the young and the wrestlers we like to play on the soap opera nature of the wwe and we kind of dive into the storyline side of things now does that make us marks are we doing this show for marks fuck yes we are doing this show for marks because it's fun it's way more fun to, to have that spin on it rather than just be every other generic wrestling podcast there is. So we try to put something a little bit different on it to have some fun with it. All right, let's crack into this week's episode of SmackDown. It was in a town. I forgot to note down what town we were in. It was in. Uh, that's Jem's job. Jem normally notes the town. Show me does the notes too. I'll be me. I kind of show up and I do all the behind the scenes editing and that sort of stuff. So like, I'm a little bit a uh, bit off. Now let's um, let's dive into the first big thing here. Uh, <laughs> like Amatron says, the start of this show has been more interesting than the whole of SmackDown. That's that's pretty positive. I'll take that. I'll take that. Uh, <laughs> town is is the best spot. It's random town, state, United States of America. Uh, let's have a chat about a match that did take place. Uh, it was the return of John Morrison. He had a match against the Big E. He's not he's not called the Big E. He's just called Big E. But it sounded fun. So we got Big E versus uh, uh, John Morrison with the Miz in, in Morrison's corner and Kof in Kofi. You know I can say Kofi. We met him that one time. We're totally mates. Um, 
uh, he yeah, he. Oh, actually, I we'll get to that because I, I want to talk about ghosts are from towns. I do want to mention that, but I, I feel that's important. So I'm going to keep that to the back end. Let's get the boring crap out of the way first. Uh, yeah, so it was, a, it was pretty much uh, Morrison's welcome back to WWE because he's been gone the longest time. He's been off at a bunch of other promotions, but he's come back uh, and he did a thing. Um, this was all right. I, I do wonder where this is going. So as it stands right now, uh, the, uh, the, the New Day are the current SmackDown tag team champions. So it's understandable that with, with Jim, uh, with Jim, I keep saying Jim Morrison, like it's the singer of the doors. Uh, with John Morrison and The Miz t uh, teaming back up, it's understandable with the, within their interest right now, within their within their eye line, is the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Period. Like, it, like what kind of awesome ass return would that be if they, you know, they've been split for years, they come back together, and bam, next thing you know, they are champions as well. Um, now, I myself don't have a lot of history with Morrison and Miz. Like, I know they had. Um, a little pairing back in the day. They were the uh, 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 they were the dirt sheet, which is cool. I don't, I don't know what that means. I saw a bad rap video and it made me cringe really hard. If I don't like using that word that often, it was really uncomfortable to look at. Um, however, uh, I'm, I'm more excited. I'm more interested in having uh, additional uh, tag teams in the mix. I think that there is a, uh, a lackluster amount of tag teams in there as it is so not a lot came out of this uh i do believe i mean did i write down who went yeah so the win did go to morrison which makes sense uh this is his return it would it would make logical sense for him to come out with the win uh and there was a little bit of distractions here and there some ringside stuff kofi came out with his newly blonded blonded hair um, yeah, so look, it was standard. I do think it could lie the potential for some more tag teamy stuff in the future. Um, I, I, however, I don't see, but it is, hmm. I am wondering, because as it stands right now, there's been no mention of, um, there's no mention of a, a, a match coming into 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 Rumble um, for the for the tag teams. Now, with the with the Rumble itself, I imagine there's probably not going to be uh, every belt on the line, which makes sense. Um, so this could be, uh, you know, like uh, this could be something that m might last a little bit longer. So I think there's some setup here. Uh, now, Ghost in the chat does mention that Kofi looks heel AF. Um, that's something I've always wondered. I've always wondered what will it take for the power of positivity to turn on its head to become the power of pessimism. <laughs> we'll go with that. Um, like what what what's going to do to make them turn? Because um, even in even in the face of you know, the, this is mentioned in a little promo, I think we maybe in last week as well. Uh, the issue that they're, they're having is like even facing Brock Lesnar losing the belt in, in eight seconds uh, and then no, like not chasing the belt it's just Kofi just let it go like he used the power of positivity to keep himself moving forward and alter his his plans and that plan became returning the tag team champions becoming seven time uh, as, uh, as Xavier was injured here in Australia at the Sydney show I don't know why I said like here in Australia like it's some sort of bragging right it's totally not a good thing so it makes sense for him to change his, his approach where he's looking um, and I think the power of positivity may have helped that However, um, I imagine there's got to be something in here, right? There's something in here that would make him mad that I think could over time bubble up and, and press itself out. And I don't know what that means for the likes of, of, of Big E because um, he, he seems pretty joyous, seems pretty happy, never really seems to want to get into the Healy side of things. So whether that is a uh, transition between the two to head into that sort of territory, but um, it's, it's certainly possible. But uh, Big Evil is mentioned in the chat here, which is a really cool idea. I think that might be a good way to get around it. Uh, it's also mentioned in the chat by Legamatron. Don't know if we have a tendency to overdo the, these tag team feuds where both members of each team competing in one-to-one -one action. That's 100% true. And that is the worst thing. It'll be that one, that one, that one, that one. And then the idea that, that them um, joining as the pair is what gets them across the line. Uh... I was referenced to NJP. So Buddy said, Buddy Watson says, yeah, then made, uh, made him verse evil in NJP, NJOPW. What's with the O in there? 
Maybe some different thing. I don't know. But um, look, the, the potential's there. It's cool. I've talked about this match way longer than I intended. Um, speaking of uh, of uh, tag matches, though, we did see uh, the Usos versus the Revival. Um, this is, I guess, semi. The, essentially, their return to in ring. Uh, they were involved in a six man tag last week, um, which is cool. It's cool. It's fine. Uh, so they did team up with Roman Reigns. Uh, we'll have to see what, what's going on here. I am so stoked to see the Usos back. Uh, I know I know Jem in particular. Um, she, she was... She, her issue was that we've seen the Usos everywhere and it's always the same feuds with the New Day or the Revival. And yeah, total is and they're here again. Because um, you don't... You, you, it's difficult to see them in matches with like heavy machinery. Um, it just doesn't seem to fit with what the Usos do. But it's good to see him back unsurprisingly they got the win the revival uh have just they've just been left to look like absolute dorks most of the time um and it's a it's a real bummer really like even though i is even though I, I'm, I'm not super sold on the revival all the time i do think they bring something of difference to the other uh the other the other tag teams but it is one of those things that, as they sort of mentioned in their post-show chat with i think it may have been kayla that uh you know WWE doesn't take tag team uh, tag team uh, wrestling serious nor uh do they feel that they are valued within the wwe um now it's been a long ongoing thing that they that they're really unhappy there they they want out uh, there was the longest time there were stretches of them teasing uh, with the likes of Cody and the Bucks, uh, with eight, what was I think it might have been before AEW even or right in the early days. Um, I guess the discussion is like, would would it be better for them to to make that transition and head over to another company? Because I know their contract were go, or about to go up at one point, and then they were given the belts. You know, I, I guess it's like an enticing reason. Like they won the belt, so they had reason to stay. Um, where but yeah in terms of what buddy's saying in the chat i hope they leave they do deserve better and i totally agree with that i think in terms of the the fact that they keep getting booked in dumb shit is 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 horrible like, especially if you look back at oh, seven months ago whenever it was last year uh when they may have just been before the usos uh were bounced <laughs> for, for a couple months there was that whole storyline about the 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 revival shaving each other's back or something um, that is an absolute garbage story. That is an absolute non-story, non-feud even. And man, like I personally was quite frustrated at that story because it was so, so absolute ball bags. Uh, buddy, uh, so the chat about the idea of, is with AEW seeing the tag team division is so stacked, would they be willing to take... Um, no, that wasn't the... No, that was... No, so the... the was it the OC? pretty sure it was the, pretty sure it was the revival because they come up yeah i'm pretty sure it was the revival. i'm pretty sure maybe in the oc i don't know it's a bunch of bald dudes shaving each other's backs it was horrible absolutely fucking horrible storyline um but yeah so i think in terms of them moving over to AEW, sure like the, the, even just their approach to tag teams are different uh in terms of like the specifics i, I obviously can't nail it like that's not exactly my area of expertise in terms of the the, the, the nitty gritty details of a wrestling match for me it's most just stories I'm, I'm a big sucker for dumb stories um i think that would work there there are a lot of tag teams over at aw but that's what the, that's what they specialize in and i think more more tag teams is is better like right now we're looking at five tag teams each one on, you know on raw on smackdown but really it's kind of like two or three so the the lack of focus on the division as a whole is actually detrimental so you're, you're constantly seeing the same teams over and over again with aew they have so many teams that it is relatively fresh like all you always see different pairings of people so it would be interesting and and i think the revival would would add something to that but saying that i'm still like seven weeks behind in aew right now so i can't really discuss that one too much uh let's have a chat uh, let's have a chat about something else that is bizarre and fucking means nothing um chad gable is currently in a a, a, a little bit of a tiff with sheamus yeah understandably it makes sense sheamus did make the return two weeks ago and just fucking broke kicked his face off uh so i understand his his issue but 
it was, it's uh, for Seamus to have this big this big return and wanting to to do something right like to he, he talks about how the roster is weak and you know there's certain things that he needs to do to sort of bring the best out of of uh, of SmackDown. I don't think uh, Chad Gable is where that needed to go. Uh, I think that's chi- now. Ghost the Machine goes, hey, did you know that Chad Gable is short? Apparently he is. He has even got a new name that I refuse to use because that name is fucking stupid. It is so dumb. I have no interest in referring to him as that name. He is Chad Gable. All right. So Seamus comes in, kicks him in the face, and then suddenly he's like, ooh, I'm gonna, ooh, you, I'm gonna punch you because you're little, because you're short. And he's like, look, I'm short. I'm aware that I'm short, whatever, whatever. And then he says literally the most, like, fucking uh, after school, uh, you know, was it, was it one of those things like specials? It's like, you know, after school specials, right? Just all this shit. Uh, it's, it's the most scripted garbage about like who you are and, and blah, 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 blah. blah. We'll have a drink. Like, nah, mate, I don't believe you. And then they proceed to announce that at the Royal Rumble, they will have a match together. What the fuck is this? And let alone, is this feud even worthy of pay-per-view? I don't think it is. That is 100% a match like, fuck, everyone's in the Rumble. What else can we do? Let's put him in this thing. It's an absolute waste of time, really. Not a waste of competitors. Like, I guess maybe, like, you know, Seamus probably could do a bit more. But, like, I guess his point of, like, this is a representation of what weakness is in SmackDown. Even that's, like, a bit shallow, right? I, I, I don't understand Seamus' motivations here of going for, for, for Chad Gable like yeah he's all right he's pretty good like i think he did all right when he was on like he was on 205 for a while um but so i i, I do wonder where this is going to go and because that in the chat right now uh the game of tron 2000 asks, does gable go over seamus and i don't think so like why fuck would he you know if uh it would it would make like it would be awesome it would be completely un, un, unexpected however i don't think I don't think he will. Sadly, I do think it will be squash, easy. Um, it'll just be bush, and then one, two, three. It's not going to be a whole bunch to it. it. Like I don't see Sheamus getting thrown around, getting wrecked, even getting ankle locked. You know what I mean? It's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It just like that is the that is the match that will allow me to go and take a piss. Like that will be my plan when that match is on. I go to the bathroom because that's that's what I'll be doing at that exact time. Uh, let's have a look at something else that's been going on right now. Uh, another another match that was announced uh, at for the Royal Rumble is uh, this thing that's going on between Lacey Evans uh, as with Bailey and Sasha. So during a backstage interview, I believe it may have been with the with the revival, the cameraman gets pulled away because he hears some some scrapping in the in the other hallway, uh, and it's Lacey Evans just going to town on both Bailey and Sasha Banks. This is the first time we've seen. Sasha Banks in a couple of weeks because she's been off recording what is presumably going to be a garbage rap album. Uh, well, that's you know that's what she's saying. I'm pretty sure she's she's jacked. She's injured. She's done. She's out and just using this cover of a of of, of a of a rap album that'll be bum. That's what I'm getting at. So in this in this little scuffle in the uh, in the hallway, it appears that Sasha Banks rolled her ankle or something. She may have slightly just stubbed her toe. She's like, ah, oh, and it gets all iced up, right? So they're at this back in the little the medics area. They're all complaining about uh, about uh, about Lacey Evans uh, and whatever, whatever. Just you know doing the whole usual bullshit you know she was in the army caught a gi jane at one point it's not it's not very good uh what <laughs> for someone that really couldn't stand lacey evans uh a year ago with her idea of walking down um walking in, in and out of the ramp uh just to some random shit i hated it uh i've really come to enjoy her i think she's got these that turn that she's had recently especially after that bullshit like uh last year what was it uh it's when they did that weird pairing maybe in summer so maybe in summer slam they did that pairing with 
and Baron Corbin, which is interesting. Um, so I kind of like what they're doing with her. It is a little bit on the nose to keep reminding us that she was a Marine um, for five years, apparently. Uh, like, it's it, it's cool. I, I really do like what they're going uh, with it. It's cool. But I think it's probably a smart, smart call, especially within within the States. There's, like, that, that military love. It would go over almost instantly because they do have, like, the... Um, they do that like for the troop show and whatnot. It kind of makes sense. It, it, it's it's the right idea. Uh, in the chat, Legamatron adds Lacey Evans has the potential to be to be the John Cena of the women's division, even more so. So how it, she is a legit badass former Marine and Bailey's heel turn has not worked, unfortunately. Hundred um, percent. This is this is a thing. So Bailey is the current champion, but you almost wouldn't think so, right? The, even even though she is the 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 top leader within the presumably within the women's locker room on smackdown she still is playing second fiddle to sasha banks so it's, it's almost if she has the title by like sasha has the title by proxy and we've seen this because even within this feud it's mostly been driven by sasha with bailey in the background so since bailey made her decision to to cut her hair and become a shit like it's just not landing for her. i because it's it, it's almost like I feel that she in the same way has jumped onto a a, a a trend because her friend had so Sasha had made had done that to that, that sort of turn on her on her return and ba- and Bailey's just following because that's that's kind of what what needed to be done. She's like, well, my friends, that I guess I should do the same thing. Which is kind of shit, to be honest. So I would really enjoy the fact of Lacey Evans just wrecking her and taking that championship. Like, we'll do our predictions later in the week, because we'll, I have uh, my uh, WWE 2K20 Royal Rumble plan. Um, you know, we do the prediction stream using the game. That's this coming Sunday. Uh, I'm yet to use a Rumble in 2K20. Let's hope it just fucking catches fire. That's what I'm really hoping personally. But I'll lay in all my predictions there. But I'm going to put this one right now. Lacey's taking that belt, my friend. She is taking it so, so hard. Uh, and it's going to be awesome. I think she'll have it for a good window of time. And it's, it's a good there. Like, although, like, Becky is face-ish, um, there's a lot of heels holding belts right now. And I, I think it would be a good good switch up i think uh, it would allow for some cool shit to happen possibly someone like i don't know uh, who's a who's a heel that's kind of gone quiet uh like nia Jax is apparently you know reese should be back soonish from her injury um she had like both knees fucked up or something um that's the scientific term so she might come back and just fucking wreck lacey evans and actually injure her for real because that's a nia Jax trademark right there uh and goes does lacey evans even have merch um I think she had one green shirt and I'm pretty sure it's on clearance right now. Like, I don't think she has her own actual shirts. Um, so I think that was, uh, even that green, uh, army green one may have been her rumble shirt. Not rumble, her NXT shirt. Um, so I'm not, I'm not looking positive. Um, but yeah, I'm curious on what's going to happen there. Uh, but in terms of where the story goes, I feel like it's already straight its course. I think, uh, I, I do feel that like the the whole attacks on Lacey being a mum is kind of cheap, and it, it demonstrates that both Sasha and Bailey have almost nothing on on Lacey. Like they are, they have. There's one thing that she has, and we're gonna run that into the ground. We're just gonna be like, "Hey, you have a kid," uh, and that's it, and that's all they've got. So I think you know, in terms of what Lacey did, just step up and knock her the fuck down. Do that straight up woman's right, just bish, rock her in the face, and then that'll come out with the belts. Speaking of belt, however, one thing I damn want, and it is even the title of this video: give Braun Strowman the belt, Big Strowman. Uh, so we saw this week uh, Braun Strowman have a chat with someone. I forget who it was, but the idea that he has in fact pinned Shinsuke Nakamura twice, and he should be entitled to an Intercontinental Championship. Now, I. I am a big fan of the Braun Strowman. I think he's even better now than he's ever, than in sort of, sort of where he's been. Like he looks good, he looks great. He's he's always been entertaining for me personally. Um, he's had quite a number of of shots uh, at certain belts, but then every time he gets within that spot, he seems to just just take it down. Yeah, you know I mean, like he gets so close, so close, so close. 
and then he loses it and like you know the example is like you know then the, obviously the, the, the bullshit i think brock was involved in like a hell in the cell match that he was meant to there was, there was a rumble a couple of years ago it was kane brock and and braun like there's all these places where he could have had a go but he does technically hold a belt he holds the greatest royal rumble belt which is a hideous green fucking thing which they did mention this week to their credit they did acknowledge that this gross belt exists i don't know why they felt the need to to remind everyone because about normal people just they just kind of been bearing it for the longest time um so in terms of where they're going with this i they should have given him a shot like a week ago like by him getting down on nakamura once that should be enough but even then like i think he has enough goodwill to request it without even having to beat him right it's like i request an intercontinental championship match and we saw that here we saw that here this week he put the request is that like, i want that match and sammy zames uh, sammy was like nah mate you ain't getting it i'm like well fuck it's not up to you this is where the hires the bookers can be like you don't have a fucking say you have a belt you defend that belt when we say you do and that's what needs to happen here they need someone needs to step in and be like bam give him that fucking championship shot and he will take it get sammy out of there get cesaro out of there put him in there even though nakamura is good and even though i, I, I parts of me don't like him personally i'm not a big fan of of his style but apparently he's fucking good um apparently he is good like he is a good wrestler he's a good competitor so i understand why he has it and where he's got it um however i get you know braun's gonna fuck him up that's all i want to say that's all i want to say i want to say him with the ic championship because as because as it stands right now it's doing absolutely nothing in this little trio that never win like how do they make this trio look good they make them win and in the chat ghost the machine says cesaro will win the rumble no he fucking won't cesaro doesn't win shit anymore he just loses constantly like how do you make a trio look good how do you put a trio over yeah they win they don't win here and it's a problem so get rid of that fucking belt put a get braun to take it because he will take it he'll fuck him up and he will take that belt and then it'll instantly be slightly more better i don't know because i'm not sure what the what the plans are for braun like once he does that uh let's have a chat about um one of the the best things going on in smackdown in wrestling in wwe especially right now uh is this whole otis and mandy storyline it is it is it is love at its most beautiful at its most true and i love it i love every second of it so this week uh uh there is a match between alexa bliss and uh and sonya deville because apparently there's no other women in the smackdown roster that are available it's just nikki cross alexa bliss alexa bliss uh <laughs> sonya deville and mandy rose and then apart from people in, in like Lacey, there's no one else apparently not a single other woman on the smackdown roster could even remotely just go and take a beating from sonya deville they has to be the same shit over and over again like there's been so many wins and losses traded it's boring get someone else in there just get anybody else in there but uh, as the gametron says give them props for continuing a storyline but you don't like it oh 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 calm down there mate uh but yes this is a long-term story this is like going back to the longest time uh with otis referring to uh mandy rose as his peach on social media like fucking months ago um and it's really good to see that still come through um so yeah so she has a match, match with alexa bliss sonya deville that is uh and yeah so she is requested uh from alexa that otis be ringside for some reason presumably to cause a distraction as we know last week he did cause a distraction by like literally finger bashing a cake um to to distract alexa or whoever to get the win um that didn't quite go down the exact same way here there was a distraction as uh as uh, another podcast listen to when see when he went full sex machine and otis just got all fucking horned up and just started like he might as well have just dry humped the side of the ring it was pretty gnarly distraction mandy falls off the ring at one point he catches her they look longingly in each other's eyes unchained melody and played in all our heads um and they didn't kiss which was very sad but 
in short, like Sonia took the loss here. Um, let's take a step away from the Otis and Mandy story for a second. Uh, Sonia Deville can do better than playing second fiddle to Mandy Rose. I don't feel that Mandy Rose has either the talent or the skill in the ring, out of the ring, to be pushed the way that she does. Uh, I think it's bullshit that Sonya is that second. Like, she's the Bailey to Sasha here. Um, I think she's better than that. And I really don't like that she continues to be roped into this shit or roped into, ooh, is she going to turn Mandy Rose lesbian? Like, that's all you ever see from, the, from these two. And I think they need to split. Um, and I'm hoping that this storyline, where they're going right now, I hope that the frustrations of of Otis, uh, of Mandy's sort of connections with Otis, is enough to push her over the line and possibly even eliminate her at the Rumble, and that will start a split, and that will give Sonya the ability to 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 be a stronger force within SmackDown's roster. Saying that though, there there like there aren't enough female tag teams let alone enough to justify the belts doing anything. Because even right now, those belts are tied up in, in As with Asuka in a feud with Becky. So they're doing even less right now. Um, but with even more less women to work with, it, it's kind of a tough thing. And I understand why, even if they wanted to split, they possibly couldn't do it for, for whatever reason. I, I think that doesn't happen. It needs to move. Um, but yeah. So cool. I want to see more of it. Give me more Mandy. Give me more Otis. That, that thing I at least like. It gives me a reason to even be remotely interested in, in Mandy Rose uh, as a character or as a as a performer. Um, let's jump over and have a squeeze. So we only have two things left to go. So that's, before we jump into the last, but let's have a chat about the King Corbin and Roman Reigns. Another feud that's been going on for like seven months at this point. Like, there's a ridiculous amount of time that this shit's going on. Uh, it's just, it's all since the since the King Corbin stuff, which originally I was a big fan of. I thought it was hysterical for him to come out as the winner because everyone got so mad about it. They got so, so mad. I reveled in it. I enjoyed that everybody got mad. Um, but I say that not knowing that this is what we would get. Um, I really thought this would have ended a lot sooner um, because this this is a problem. Uh, so there was a match here between uh, Roman Reigns and Bobby Roode. As we know, came back from his uh, injury for the last couple of weeks. Uh, with, but there was something additional to this match. Uh, the idea was whoever won would get to pick the stipulation for the King Corbin Roman Reigns match on Rumble. So before they join the Rumble, they have their own match, uh, and this is a stipulation. So uh, this was a tables match as well, to sort of add a little bit more into it, and that came from um, Roman being put through a table through the outset of the week before. Um, yeah, okay. Cool. Sweet. So that's a meta table match. I was, I was curious on why they made a table match. It seemed unnecessary, but I also kind of liked it because it's always fun to get tables involved. Uh, in short, uh, you know, uh, Do I've been pretty sure Dolph got involved. The Usos got involved. Corbin tried to get involved and didn't really happen. They did try. There was an attempt to swing it in the way of Corbin because if Bobby Roode win, it would assist Corbin in getting the stipulation that he wanted. And I... I'm not sure what stipulation they would have used, uh, what Corbin would have used. I would imagine it would be probably no holds barred, no DQ, something like that, in order to have everybody come in and, and help him out. Uh, that seems where his angle or his plans would have probably aligned, right? Um, so, however, uh, Roman Reigns did get the win. Um... Yeah, that's pretty much what I said. Yeah, so, so I have a quick check on my notes there to make sure I got all the details correct. But yeah, no, that's in short. So in short, Roman gets the win. Uh, he says that the Rumble is being held at a baseball stadium. Baseball stadiums are big. They're huge. And I'm going to punch your face all over it. So it is a Falls Count Anywhere match. Um, okay. Cool. Uh, I, I think that's probably a good idea because uh, from previous account of um uh, of events in baseball stadiums the sound gets lost because there is like no roof and it's weirdly open sound just goes right so there seems to be less 
uh, it almost feels like a detachment from what's happening in front of you. So I think by having the potential for the two of them to run around and to sort of get involved within either the crowds, it makes sense to sort of try keep them engaged while they probably set up for, for the big rumble match or something. Um, in terms of who's going to go over, I fucking hope it's Roman so it just stops. But um, I and then i don't know where it's gonna go and then presumably we both get back in the rumble and then someone will eliminate the other whoever wins will will be eliminated in the rumble It'll be something lame like that uh let's have a look in the chat <clears throat> so like gamatron adds how this angle is closing the show is beyond me that's true. i'm surprised if he didn't open the fucking show most of the time however corbin has improved immensely that is true he really has i do he is the one true heel at this point right if you look at the crowds he's the only one that is getting consistent booze he's getting consistent shit like he is the only genuine heel like even character people that are supposed to be heel get cheered or they get nothing right he is getting legitimate responses from the crowd granted i'm sure a lot of it's go away heat and that's kind of different to like kind of legit heel heat right but it's it's, it's good i enjoy it i i enjoy the the disdain for him that part i enjoy <clears throat> buddy also adds in the chat i think corbin getting better gear may make him appear better and more legit <clears throat> one second <clears throat> So that's true prior, <clears throat> prior to him doing the gm stuff that he's doing now he uh, so prior to the gm stuff he did previously uh he where he had the the longest hair for a bald man ever and like the whole lone wolf thing um was interesting i, I liked it i'm glad he got the haircut he looks better with the bald hair i did like him wrestling in the suit i thought that was a good little touch i enjoyed it but the the the, the king gimmick is working it's cool um for him at least i mean like as in it's it's a, it's a point of difference i think that could be done better of course but i also agree that why can't he get new ring attire that can match that king aesthetic right um i don't know whether that be sort of some logo or some you know sort of uh, uh, uh royalty-esque looks on on his pants uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a fucking clothes designer i don't know what they're gonna do but i think they they need to do something to change that um uh well gamatron agrees with buddy he goes this is getting annoying just like his waiter's uniform as constable um <clears throat> that yeah i liked it because it was once again it's a point of difference um however i think there yeah, there is something that can be done there that makes him different uh the <laughs> gamertron adds have him join the royal family seeing as megan and harry are on the way out that's true i think he can replace um replace prince harry um because you know at least king corbin has an area of the country to lead um as now corbin virginia there is somewhere in the in in the united states of a town called corbin that has been renamed recently into king corbin so i guess he has an area to rule it looks like apparently even it's a good town at all but it's, it's there now dash if you are watching um do you have a sheet for me is what i'm saying uh let's have a look so let's get into the final the big juicy this is the bray the continuation of the bray wyatt daniel bryan uh thing uh, set up that we've got, got right now uh this episode <clears throat> kicked off with uh the big red machine kane uh for some fucking reason he made an appearance in this episode he came i'm pretty sure he came to hype up the rumble because he they've discussed that he has the he's he's participated in the most royal rumbles and possibly uh eliminated the most people overall i guess that comes from appearing the most he probably has the highest total of eliminations um but in short he was there straight up to just put um daniel bryan over so uh from what we know from previously uh it has won 11 eliminations says buddy in the chats uh yeah so most eliminations in one rumble from memory um but didn't roman reigns take that though that could be my roman reigns yeah so i thought so so uh spire in the chat corrects that for me um so he's in the ring having a chat about the rumble then we get on the screen we get bray wyatt having a chat to him sort of reminding him that like hey you're on my wall dude like how are you still here like you've not obviously not changed so it's this weird situation here of like i've taken i've taken you out why are you here 
you know, I think that might be a little hint to to what could be coming with the fiend. Like there are minor things that we're seeing that may in fact expose his weakness, right? We'll get to that theory in just a second. So uh, lights go down as they always do. He, uh, Kane's smart. He gets out of the ring. He knows from the last time he took that claw that he needs to bounce. Next thing, uh, 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 Bray Wyatt comes out from under the ring, does the whole coming out of hell thing. He starts making his way to the ropes. Next thing, boosh, Daniel Bryan comes out of nowhere, kicks the living fuck out of him. Double knees, uh, maybe a missile drop kick, and then he's just like pounding his face in, which then resulted in um, <clears throat> in uh, The Fiend then escaping back down the hall, but not before... Um, before removing a bunch of his dreadlocks and a pair of glasses, which was which was weird. It's interesting. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of where they're going. Now, Legame are trying to ask in the chat, why are they making the Fiend run away? That annoys the shit out of me. I have an idea of that. Give me a second. I think I have something about that. So, um... Later on in the night, we do get a chat with Daniel, uh, with Daniel Bryan. He has mentioned that it will be a strap match which essentially means the fiend and daniel bryant will be strapped together and then so no matter what happens they will always be within each other's business and presumably the fiend will accept um this okay so let's let's have a chat here about my potential theory now it's not fleshed out by any means it's ran it's randomly thrown together from a couple of things that i heard around and i kind of want to try to piece them together myself i think the one thing that will defeat the fiend is his past, right? So the whole, the whole, the whole thing is about the fiend uh, never forgetting. The past is always there. And I think is the past is what propels him forward. So, and on top of that, the one thing that he has been doing, he has consistently changed all everyone that he's faced to return to who they were in the past. Like, you know, you know, like Seth Rollins, he returned back to, to some heel stuff. Uh, same as Finn Balor, returned to some heel things, uh, even prior to you know, his time at WWE. Um, and that seems to be where they're going with this, right? It's all about those changes. However, Daniel Bryan, who was a heel at the time, then got changed to a face. Now, who was the one person to, you know, to break Daniel, uh, to break Bray Wyatt in the past? That was Daniel Bryan. He he infiltrated the Wyatt family. He broke it from the inside and then pulled it apart. And that's where essentially where that crumble came down, right? So my theory is what will what will take him down is his own past now whether that be just the fact that daniel bryan has broke you know he's broke he's broken the the structure the, the 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 monster that is the fiend that there is like i believe the fiend is a almost like a coping mechanism for everything that's happened within the past right as i there is so much that's happened within the past of bray wyatt good stuff bad stuff trauma and the fiend is his mask pun intended uh to the world and by his like, because he's refusing to face the past right like although the fiend may remember the past he never acts upon it or changes it he just seeks revenge on that past because everyone that has messed with him every everyone that sorry everyone the fiend has messed with has been someone from his past right someone that had caused him trauma previously so i think the idea that unexpectedly changing uh 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 unexpectedly changing daniel bryan to his you know face daniel bryan is probably not what what he expected right so he he is now daniel bryan is the only one that can get in and essentially re remind you know re re-trigger those emotions within the fiend that would, that may cause him to break is kind of where i think this is going now i'm taking a lot of fucking reaches here I was grabbing at random things that might bring it together but i also have a feeling that what if what if the weakness the one thing that can bring down the fiend like his one weakness we it's been in front of our faces this entire time what if from day one we've seen this what if and that's where i'm coming out with this that that's why i think this lands 
Uh, let's see. Legamatron does does the fiend need to have a weakness? It would make him a killer till WrestleMania. Now, like any good horror movie villain, because essentially what he is, he won't get taken down in one go. Um, I think it will go through to Mania. I think it will be a killer match, as you mentioned. Um, I think there is something there. I think they can ex- they will find a way to continue it for, you know, what three more months, and it'll be cool. I don't know how they're going to do it, but I have a feeling that they can, because I don't. I don't think there's an there's enough here. There's an there's enough break. I think Daniel Bryan will essentially chip away at it over the next couple of months, and we'll see that change. We'll see. We'll see the fiend uh, act er- uh, erratically. So in the set, because right now he's pretty cool, calm and collected, right? And when he gets in the ring, he's calm and collected, you know, in the same way, even when he had that, the, the shit box match against, uh, Seth Rollins and the hell in the cell, he still remained calm, collected and focused, right? I and mean, that's all we've seen. And we are starting to see him rattle. So I, I do think it will take a little bit of time for him to rattle and we'll see that break. We'll see that break within Bray Wyatt in the front house. We'll see he act, him act more erratically. Uh, and also sort of remove this veneer of this fake friendly happiness. I think that will crack over the next window of time. Um, and I do think uh, we'll get more of that over over the next run. The uh, Gamertron also adds, in a perfect world, I would like I would make him enter the Rumble as the Fiend, Bray Wyatt, then the Sweater, and the Muscle Man do three faces of Foley. <gasps> actually, that'd be really good, actually. That'd be so good. Put the Muscle Man in there. I'll, I'll pee my pants. Um, uh, Ghost Machine adds, Roman's going to kill him at Mania. Um, is there any history with, Ma- with Roman, though? Like, in terms of uh, adding to my theory... Is, is there history with Roman and Bray? I imagine there's not, if very minimal. Um, not, not a thing, says Ghost. So not a thing. So that will... Confuses me, right? I'm not quite sure what that will be. So it does put a pin in my theory because the current prediction right now is that Roman Reigns will take the, will take the win. Um, will take, will take the, the win over over the Rumble and then take it to Mania and, and get a shot. Uh, Braun, yeah, Braun's the only other one, which is interesting that they, like, they mildly touched upon Braun late last year, uh, early this year, late, late last year, sorry. They mildly touched upon it when he was doing that little tag teamy thing um, with Seth Rollins, but I really feel that was, that they kind of didn't quite get there. But yeah, outside of Daniel Bryan, there's no one else that has history. And in order for my theory to go through, I need Roman to, like, not take him out of Mania. Um, I, I think it'd be real mad if it goes down. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Mullet Show in the chat jumps in and goes, surprise twist, main event at Mania ends up bringing Bray Wyatt versus The Fiend with the Muscle Man as a special guest ref. I'm still waiting for the day that we see Daniel Bryan in the ring and then the fiend on the ramp. That's what I want to see. Just like I think that would be an absolute laugh to see them separated. I think that would be, um, yeah. On uh, so Willow in the chat goes, "What if the friend's only weakness is himself, the fiends?" That's my point. His 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 only weakness is himself in terms of his if his of his past and his history. That is his weakness, and I think as that sort of gets gets pushed through, we'll we'll get to that point. All right, so let's finish off the show as we do with the dirt sheet. So, a good friend over uh, at Dash Gamer, which is the Dash, he comes through with uh, just one bit uh, of a bit of bit of internet goss. So, let me pull it over here. I'm going to chuck it. He gave it to me in a notepad file for some reason. I'm going to chuck it in Word so that way I can read it a little bit better. Now, as a good friend of the show, Dash, Dirt Sheet Dash, he comes in. And he gives us, he scours into it. He reaches out to his his friends, his connections within the wrestling biz, and then passes that information on to us. Now, because I'm looking at Word, this shit's as bright as fuck in my face, and I'm looking very washed out right now. But we can go with it. He brings us one bit of dirt sheet news this week. And the dirt sheet is... The Edge is the favorite to win the Royal Rumble. Yes, you read that right, Dash says. With it all but confirmed that Adam Edge Copeland uh, resigning uh, with the w- uh, re-signing, sorry, with WWE this last month, uh, WWE have plans to push the rated R superstar once again as the pillar of the Friday Night SmackDown roster. 
Vince has Vince McMahon has major plans to push Edge as the Universal Champion. The only downside to the agreement is that Edge will only be making rare appearances a la Brock Lesnar. Understandably, he's got a fuck, fucked up back. It makes sense he can't go hard. It is currently stated, uh, slated for Edge to face The Fiend at WrestleMania this year for the championship. Now, Dave Meltzer, who I can't stand, of of figure4wrestling.com, stated, now, did you make this as gnarly? Oh, kind of. Who stated the following, quote, we may see Edge in the Rumble, but I don't think we'll see much of him at the Rumble too. It will be an interesting case, but I just don't see it happening for Edge, but I can see him coming back as a top star, but I don't know. It could happen either way. So once again, Dave Meltzer says absolutely fucking nothing because that's kind of what he does. He just mumbles his way through a sentence like some sort of dementia patient. And um, yeah, cool. Uh, I'm open to the idea of Edge coming in and giving it a red hot go. But he wants to say 6.5 stars. <laughs> uh, let's have a look. So uh, in the chat, they're discussing about the Edge as in uh, the, the, the guitarist of U2. That would be awesome. Have him come in and, and be champ. Um, I'm down with that. Um, I'm interested in to see how this goes because we did see Edge make an appearance. Um, uh, so, when was it? I forget, but he speared the living fuck. I think it was it was SummerSlam because I were in Toronto where he uh, straight up speared the living shit out of Elias. So that was really cool. I enjoyed that a lot. Um, I think there's enough time. I, 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 everyone hopes that he comes back at some point, right? So he's one of those competitors that you everyone's like oh man if edge comes back it's gonna be so good i guess it's kind of like punk in that sense i think the hype for punk is a bit higher but there is this 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 uh desire to see him return but apparently had the same back shit that like fucked up page uh from if i remember right so and she there's no way that she's ever coming back in the ring um so there's that um legamatron in the chat also mentions that christian has still yet to retire have him win it. Yeah, but Grant Christian in there too. Have them be on the tag team division. Like, remember last year, you know, the Hardy boys won it for a hot minute until, like, Jeff Hardy had a DUI and broke his leg or some shit. And then he had to bounce out. So, like, why not, right? Why not? But anyways, that brings us to the end <clears throat> of our SmackDown analysis, a breakdown. Thank you very much for joining me, everyone on Twitch, everyone on your podcast services. It's been awesome as always. But if you weren't sure, this wrestling conversation happens every Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. on your podcast services, 9 a.m. on those YouTubes. But if you want to join that wrestling conversation, you can head over to Facebook, Discord, uh Twitter, uh, Instagram, all those links are in the description below. If you want to join the conversation as it happens, however, head over, come over to Twitch, twitch.tv slash thepopculturists, uh, where we uh, do this at 8 p.m. usually on a Monday, uh, a Monday evening, depending if I'm also doing another i'm doing another uh another show at the time because i I'll now be guesting on uh dash gamer the dash gamer podcast and that might push this recording back a little bit but if you want to enjoy our, re- our, our raw analysis that's also on twitch uh that's wednesday night at eight o'clock um comes up every thursday morning um now we uh one thing we do is we used to have this viewing it live behind our patreon paywall we've since removed that uh, the paywall that is Patreon is still there so if you want to support us financially head over to patreon.com slash the pop culture support us any dollar value you get nothing for it it's just the kindness of your heart you don't have to no obligations but if you want to support us in a more one soft fashion head over to popculturist.com slash shopping by shirts and other assorted shit with our logos on it uh, this could be a whole uh, bunch of stuff there do you have some more things in the mount, in the plan as we have the likes of Max and Jem now in the fold we need to get them on shirts is all I'm saying uh, but yes and we are on Twitch twitch.tv slash the pop culturist as I mentioned we stream games on the Thursday but this Sunday evening 8pm Australian time we'll be doing our Royal Rumble predictions using the power while well, using the subpar power of WWE 2K20 so now that game is a hot mess as we know, but I'm looking forward to to seeing how it copes with a rumble. I hope it goes absolutely horrible. Um, I I think you need to come and see it. Is what I'm saying. Come check it out. But anyways, until next until we talk raw uh, talk, talk raw on uh, Wednesday slash Thursday. I'm Ryan Betson, and we'll see you then. Bye. <laughs>
The Young and the Wrestlers, the pop culturist WWE podcast, is fan support over at Patreon at patreon.com slash thepopculturist. And we'd like to thank our Patreon producers and our Patreon founders for their kindness, their support, and their generosity. Our Patreon founders, Alpha Ferret, Craig O'Flaherty, David Chataway, Jesse Stevenson, and Jacob Garner. And our Patreon producers, AJ Abatomi, Damien Holdies, Kyle Dunn, Lee Winterschoven, Nathan Massetti, Paul James, Pure Mongrel, and Sean Levitt.